Hello, I'm Amir Abadir. I'm a product lead in ING's technologies platform. I'm a product engineer at heart with a great passion for creating products that bring value to our consumers. My primary focus now in ING is to enhance our developer experience on the technology platform through journey automation, easier solution assembly and integration, and streamlining of processes for developers to build solutions on top of our platform. In this presentation, I will share with you our experience in building ING technology platform, including accomplishments, challenges, and strategies for achieving a better developer experience. Two years ago, we recognized the necessity of developing a technology platform that could serve as a foundation for creating and managing solutions and business applications. Our primary objective was to provide our users with the capability to concentrate on their core objectives and effortlessly operate applications without worrying about the underlying technology. In doing so, our developer community could build on top of the platform and align it with their unique propositions, leveraging the benefits of products and service reusability. This approach results in a shorter time to market, consistent high quality products and services, increased productivity and reduced costs associated with maintaining our services. Our main process, uh, promise to our consumers and developer community was to empower the developer community to reach the customers ever faster and ever more meaningfully. We have had great accomplishments in our promise building the technology platform. Our consumers now have access to a variety of services, including foundational services like SDKs, gateway, service mesh, and standardized pipelines, as well as experienced services such as our UDS system or unified design system, which is our system that includes all the tools, guidelines, and reusable front end components that ensures a consistent user experience in the end. Additionally, we also have the business services such as authentication, notification, or engagement services. Our foundational services currently support over 1,500 running applications, web applications, mobile applications, and service applications. We provide support for more than 1,000 running APIs on our mesh, and we process millions of authentication and notification transactions on a monthly basis. We provide support to our developer community's 15,000 DevOps engineers while catering to the needs of over 30 million of our beloved customers in more than 10 countries. Despite our numerous accomplishments in building the technology platform, we have encountered some challenges or setbacks. The very success we have achieved has brought to light new issues that were not problematic before scaling up our technology platform. While we were able to improve our time to market significantly through the reuse of hundreds of components in our catalog, we encountered challenges with the complexity of integrating these services together and the amount of time spent on the manual and repetitive configuration. Engineers don't know where to start, what to do next, who to talk to when they are integrating a service, which team is providing which part of the platform. It resulted in an incoherent experience because the whole complexity of integration offset all or most of the benefits of reusing components that are actually available for people to use. That resulted in high lead time. It resulted in engineers not knowing what is needed and engineers doing things that are actually they don't enjoy the most. Ultimately, we became slow, impacting our innovation. It took us sometimes six to seven months to have a simple uh, application deployed on production and running with all the configurations that are needed, like gateway configurations, network configurations, and so on. And this is very simple code that could actually take maybe a few hours to implement. But with all restrictions that are in place and all the controls that need to be met to go to production, the whole process was tedious and slow. At this point, 
we came to the realization that we must prioritize our consumers, which are, in this case, our developers, their experience, and how they engage with our platform. Instead of providing a collection of individual products and services, we present a comprehensive platform. That is how it should be, where the experience as whole is paramount. This is the whole experience of our developers is what is most important, rather than from our view as uh, uh, of a platform uh, provider, looking at it as a bunch of collected services and products. It's a whole experience from our consumers trying to stitch all these products and services together. This is what we were actually not focusing on. Our success is subject then to the overall experience of the platform rather than the products that being that were being developed in isolation. For this, we started focusing again on some of our tools, main tools, and we started focusing again on some of our main principles and how to shape this for a better developer experience. We started with trying to focus more on our pipelines, extending these pipelines, making them rich pipelines, which then should be tailored and standardized for the various common types of resources that developers are trying to build, encompassing everything from the build process to the deployment process for different kinds of resources, such as web applications or APIs, trying to have them deployed. And then one of the main thing in our new strategy is much more focus on automation. Engineers are not required to manually configure services and products. Instead, they can leverage on the pipeline and our command line interface or CLI to self-configure these services they require in a consistent manner using the shift left approach where we want to focus on configuration as code instead of disconnected portals that we are trying to configure things uh, uh, in uh, uh, consistently. So now imagine this. If a developer trying to build a backend service application, they would identify or define their backend service in a YAML file. They have it stored in the repo, and then it gets pushed uh, uh, through the pipeline to our configuration manager. Our configuration manager is highly influenced by the Kubernetes API. This configuration manager receives all the incoming requests for configuration changes, does all the authentication and authorization necessary for it to actually check if this configuration is allowed. So we have our OPA or the open agent uh, policy. And then this is where all the checks are done. Is this uh, a configuration allowed? Is this team allowed to request this configuration? And all the other checks that different resource uh, providers um, would like to have in, in place. Then if everything is in check, the configuration manager would have this um, placed into our Kafka event bus. And then this is where the magic happens, where all the different uh, uh, controllers of our different resources would then process this request accordingly uh, as per what is actually needed. And then you can imagine that we have the uh, namespaces created, our VMs provisioned, or our ICHP instances uh, uh, already automatically configured for our users. And then this is where actually it happens on behalf of our users. Uh, users, they don't need to do this anymore. Huh? So that is the whole automation. It's highly focused uh, 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 with all the triggers to be in place and then with all the next steps for our users to be done next. Then we have our console or this is the management cockpit where developers are able to effortlessly monitor and manage their applications. What is the status of the applications? What is the status of all the dependencies of this application that actually makes it run? And then on top of the console, we also have our wizards, which allow the developers to avoid building everything from scratch. Think of these as simple uh, uh, stepped uh, uh, approach where we take the developers through um, the intention of trying to see what they would like to build. These are optimized paths that actually further enhance the engineering experience 
and the end of these wizards would be the bunch of YAMLs that the user need to have stored in the repo. Usually this is much beneficial at the first time they are trying to build something and then if they would like to change they would refer to their YAMLs and change all their uh, uh, configuration over there uh, with a kickstart from the wizards to scaffold some of their code already. Then we have integration patterns where it facilitates the collaboration between different platforms. So we have our technology platform. We also have our infra platform. We have our engineering platform where we identify teams, what are the uh, roles of the teams, what are the membership in, in, in these teams. This is the base of, a lot of, of, of understanding what, um, who is allowed to do what. Huh? And then with these different uh, platforms, we need a kind of integration pattern. Huh? So we need some collaboration. We need some automation consistency across these platforms so that they enable to have automated resources in the end span for our users. So this collaboration allows for the swift uh, configuration of the resources and the spin-off and setup of environments within minutes. And then we have the portal that brings together the engineering resources. So this portal, we have the home part, which is the promotion part, where actually they can find all the tools, they can find all the support for the community, they can find feedback, they can find updates and news, they can uh, uh, track all their issues under support and so on. We have some uh, marketplaces or the catalog where we want to show all the services and products that we have in our uh, platform and encourage reuse huh? so that eventually we make use of the reuse of these uh, uh, components and not uh, reinvent all the wheel in addition to um, uh, uh, having a faster time to um, market it leads to consistency of these services in the end um, yeah so the portal we have the home, the marketplace, and the console, which we already discussed. This, this is the management uh, uh, cockpit. But then the whole portal, the aim of the portal is that it brings together the engineering different resources and tools, providing an extensive support throughout the entire life cycle of the solutions. This support spans from discovery to design phase through development and all the way to the distribution of our software and components. Our goals in the end were very specific. This is where we uh, 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 um, identified some of the matrix or the, the, the um, uh, trailing matrix that would um, eventually identify our success in improvement of the developer experience. So we wanted to focus on or trying to achieve achieving a reduced lead time of creating and deploying new applications in say less than 15 minutes. We wanted to eliminate manual and inconsistent ways of configuring services and products, such as emails, tickets, and portals. All that was very confusing to our, to our developers and it was actually leading to a much broken engineering journey. We wanted as much as possible to eliminate this manual and inconsistent ways of doing things. We want to provide a unified developer experience that does not entail a yet another portal that was created by another team. And eventually it would add to the complexity of the experience. We wanted to strive to provide a more focused experience and journeys and the platform as a product instead of a bunch of services, rather would be a platform as a product as how our developers or our consumers actually see it. Improve the overall documentation, training, feedback, management, and support would also assist us is in this platform as a product mindset. And then by achieving all these goals, we are better positioned to deliver our initial promise of a shorter time to market, increased productivity, and lower cost to serve. Thank you.